Today I will show you how to create this Burning Man effect in Photoshop. So let's start. Hi guys, my name is Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. Today I will show you how to create this interesting Burning Man effect from a Fantastic Four movie. So let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's have fun. Alright guys, today we will use a few different images for this project. This will be our background. Then we have this one, it's actually myself, shoot it in the studio. And I will be the main model, I will be Johnny the Flame here. And this is just a simple shot, one uh, soft light from the front and one soft light from uh, my left side, uh, our right side. And that's it. And we will use a few flames like this flames from fire to build our effect from it. All right, first thing what we need here is to extract the model out of the background. To save the time for this tutorial, because we will have a lot of things to do, I already extracted myself out of the background here, as you can see. And actually, I will give you this layer already extracted for you to practice. All right, and now I will copy this layer and place it here on our background. So uh, now, now I need to uh, make it smaller and rotate it a little bit. And I will press Ctrl or Command T to activate the transform tool, free transform tool, and just with the holding shift to constrain proportion, I will make it smaller, the model here myself. And I will put myself somewhere here, something like so. We will adjust the rotation later if we need to. And the perspective here, it's not quite right but we will fake it a little bit. I will use Puppet Warp tool and just put a few pins. If you don't know how to use a Puppet Warp tool, I have a tutorial about that. You can find the link right here. All right, and I'll expand this a little bit, hide mesh, and let me see, just rotate this a little bit here and move the legs. Like so, it's not so important to, to be quite good because actually this will be a silhouette and I don't think that the legs will be actually so visible at the end. So that's how I will do it. Press OK before and after, before and after, not bad at all. And let's go again to transform tool and just rotate it a little bit. Let me see, maybe just tweak the perspective a little bit. Let me see before and after. Yeah, not bad. Actually, let's zoom it a little bit more. Yeah, it's like I'm flying here. All right, the next thing what we need to do is to convert the model to black and white. For that, I will use a keyboard shortcut, shift Control u or shift Command u on a Mac. So let's do that. And now we need to invert, invert the model. So Control i or uh, command I on a Mac to invert the model and here we have the, the image how it's looking right now. So we have a few problems here. Actually we have one problem, the pants are too bright because before it was dark and now when I inverted it was too too bright. For this photo, we don't need so bright clothes, so we will fix that by selecting the pants and make it brighter before inverting. So I will use quick selection tool and just quickly select here pants like so. And I don't need shoes here, just pants and maybe my legs here like so. And oops. That's that's basically it. Now I will use curves like so and already have a mask from that and just make this brighter. So let's 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 pull the shadows up like so. It's looking really strange right now, but it will be good when we invert this. And let's zoom it a little bit. We can fix these edges, but actually we don't have to fix it because the fire will cover that up and this will be perfectly fine. So now we need to merge those two layers into one. Just click on the first one, press and hold shift and click on, click on the second one. And now press Control Command I. 
sorry, E, Control or Command E to merge it together. So that's nice. Now press Control Command I to invert the layer and we have pretty nice colored pants. It's great pants. Okay, now let's fix some things that are not so quite good here. First, I don't like this uh, reflection in the in the eyes. It's black because we inverted. I will use just a brush, make my brush smaller, and I will sample this color by holding out the option key and just with 100% opacity brush, I will just paint here and sample this color and paint here. That's nice. Let's fix this a little bit. All right. Is the same procedure here. Just paint, sample the color, maybe make a brush smaller. And that's really, really nice. Right now, I will use a healing brush tool. It's right here or J on a keyboard it's a shortcut. And I will just remove some white, bright, these bright spots that I actually don't like to see now on the image. Right, that's okay. And this dark spot on the nose, it's a little bit distracting. It was actually bright from the light, but now when we inverted everything, it becomes dark. All right, let me see. That's really nice for now. So I have the model here. Let's rename it to model. Model, okay. And I have the background. So the next step is to make the model look more uh, yellowish orange like a fire. So to do that, we, we can do that in a few different ways. I will choose to use hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it to the model because I want, on, want only to affect the model layer and just click here, colorize. That's nice. So I will choose something like so and boost the saturation up. You can always go and change this if you don't like. But for now, this is okay. And one optional step, I will use gradient map to add a little bit more color to, to the model here. Right, clip it to the model. And now I will choose this. Okay, if you don't have this palette here, don't worry. Just use some orange color for darks and some bright, bright yellow color for these highlights, like so almost white. All right, press OK. And now I want to put this layer into maybe overlay. Let me see. Yes. And lower the opacity. Something like so. It's already much better. Before and after. You can see the difference. It's obvious. So the next step is to dodge and burn the model a little bit. So I will put the dodge and burn layer below all these adjustment layers here. Right? I will use, if you don't know how to dodge and burn, or again, you can watch my tutorial about dodge and burn. You can find a link right here. And I will use one of my favorite methods to dodge and burn with the curve. So I will make a dodge curve like so. Invert with Control Command I, invert the mask to have a black mask. I will name this D for dodge. And I will use another curve for burning. It's like so, and invert again and press that name B for burn. All right, and now let me see, let's use the dodge curve and let's use softer brush, like 0%, all right? And maybe 20% opacity here and start, maybe it's too much 10% opacity and start to build up some contours. You don't need to do that, but I like to have some brighter contours here. It will add to the effect right here and some bright lines here to emphasize the eyes a little bit okay and here something like so maybe to make these eyebrows even brighter and this part here then this dark part of the lips, just to make a little bit brighter. So, right, let me see. And it's really, really nice already, better for my taste. Let me see, maybe here. And now let's go to the burn. 
and burn a little bit more this inside of the eyes like so again you don't need to do that that's an option but if you like to do that you're free to experiment there are no mistakes just have fun experiment you can achieve maybe completely different result and that's pretty fine too i want this to have a little bit more contrast here like so and let me see maybe here just a little bit right and yes that's really really nice maybe to make the arms arms a little bit darker they are a little bit brighter right now and this part of the shirt like so maybe the legs here too why not and i think we are now good to go so let me see before and after before and after really really nice all right let's group all of these layers control command g and let's name this model okay now let's go and put some fire to our image so let's go and find a fire layer i will use this one control or command a control command c and then control command v to paste it here right this will be our fire so let's make this layer smaller like so and i will leave it like so and now we need to put this layer into a screen blending mode to get rid of the black color because green blending mode doesn't see the black color that's our option here okay that's great now i want to use eraser tool e for eraser and just erase this edge here and then i want to use levels you can go image adjustment levels or just press on shortcut control or command l on a keyboard and i want to make dark parts a little bit darker as you can see the effect here just a little bit darker and the bright parts and mid-tone parts a little bit brighter to have something like so all right this will be my base layer of fire and i will make it invisible actually uncheck the, this uh, eye icon and then duplicate it control command j to duplicate it and then i will make this visible and now control command t to transform this and make it smaller and now just put this fire around the model you can tweak it uh, transform it as much as you like and you can use warp tool to warp it if you like and just put the fire around the model like so and maybe it's too big i will make it even smaller just to have a better effect and let me see if i can use this warp and put it like so it's nice press ok and then i will put the mask on this layer use a brush a little bit harder brush around 70 percent and the black color and just with 100 percent opacity paint to get rid of the things i don't want i just want the fire over the edge here of the model so i will do one more time and then i will speed up this process because it will last a li little bit longer and you don't need to see all of that in a real time because every step it's completely the same like this first one and the second one second one is again duplicate this base layer make it visible Control command t and then just go make it as small as you want and find the position for for the, the head for example like so maybe even smaller and that's the head position and press ok put a mask on it and just erase these parts that you don't want to be visible all right you just need some fire around the model like so okay now i will fast forward this uh, and actually i will speed up the process and see you in a few moments
All right, and here we are, that's it. Now that we have all around the model fire, actually I don't have legs, but uh, we will cover legs with a bigger fire later. And we are almost done with this. So as you can see, we have too many layers here and I will click on the first one and then click on the last one by holding shift to select all these layers and then I will merge them into one layer by pressing control or command E on a keyboard, so that's it. And now we need to put this one layer into screen blending mode again to get rid of those black spots. And we are okay to go now. Let's name this Edge Fire to know what it is. We can duplicate this layer to have even brighter fire. That's really nice. And yeah, we can merge that together again and put it in a screen blending mode and just remove the copy name here all right and that's perfect for now all right guys now we need to make a fire for the body so for that we will use the same layer of that flame that we use for the edge fire and we will build up from that great nice texture texture fire for the body so let's do that all right so we will use this same texture again control command j to duplicate then we will make it smaller, but a lot smaller, like so, because I don't want this flame texture to be big like so, I really want a small one, like so. Press OK, and now we need to duplicate this several times to cover whole body here. So I will duplicate that by holding Alt Option key and just move it, then rotate it, and like this, I will build up the scene, Control command t and this procedure can last a little bit, so take time for that, just duplicate several times and make something interesting. Of course you can duplicate this by pressing Ctrl or Command J like so and then you have a copy of it, but I like to press Alt or Option key and just drag it out as a copy and this is faster for me as you can see here and it's it's really really nice so I'll fast forward this again alrighty guys now I cover the whole body and I will duplicate one more time but this time I will make this oops even smaller like so, and I will cover the face with that, okay? Just to have some flame effect on the face, but we will lower the opacity of this. So let me see, where is the last one? This is the last one, so we can group this. Actually, I will merge them together, press put it in a screen blending mode and duplicate that just have this faster so now that we have all those uh, layers made and cover the body again press on the first one and go all the way down to the last fire layer press ctrl command e on a keyboard and that's it put it in a screen blending mode and we have body fire uh, body sorry body uh, okay fire that's nice so let's change the keyboard and that's it now we need to lower the opacity of this layer like so because i don't want this to be so visible put a layer mask on it and erase this for from eyes nose i don't want this to be on the nose or on the lips here let's use softer brush like so and here it's okay let me see this is pretty much okay for now all right guys the next step will be to make some um, heat effect uh, on a body you will see what i mean in a second go to the model layer duplicate the model layer clip it here and go to the filter filter gallery and as you can see you know that, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, that phenomenon when you, when you uh, see through the fire or 
when outside it's hot and you can see that waving uh, background because of the heat and we need to imitate that effect here. You can go to the brush strokes here and choose the spatter or you can go to the sort and choose the ocean ripple and then mess mess here with with the settings. I like this better better. It's right. <laughs> All right. And I'll see. Let's let's use something like so and press OK. And you can see effect right away before and after before and after this heat effect. So I don't like to be covered on the face here on the eyes. I will put the mask and just delete this from the face, not the whole face, but just from the mouth, nose, maybe leave on some part of the nose here, like so. And this is okay, but I will lower the overall opacity, maybe 80%, it's nice. And let's go to body fire and maybe lower it even more like so. So we are done with some part of the effect. All right, the next step will be to add some flames to the legs. So let's do that. All right, let's use some other image for for the fire for the legs. Let's use this one maybe. I will use the, use the lasso tool and just use this part, copy it and paste it here. All right, and now I will make this smaller. Control Command T, make it smaller like. So maybe a little bit bigger and then I will use a mask and just mask out these parts that I actually don't need. You will see in a second what I'm trying to make here and I just want to make some shape like so. Right and bring back with a white color, bring back some parts here and with this just, just make something like he's flying this effect, right? And for now it's okay. Let's lower the brush opacity and delete from, from here. And now I can change the brightness and saturation of this. Let's use hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it here and let's make it a little bit to the, to the red and maybe lower the saturation a little bit. So let's leave the brightness as it is. Right, the next step is to add some fire around this. I will use again this, this uh, same layer that we use for everything else. You can choose any other fire for that. Right, let's put it all the way up. Okay, like so and let me see, make it smaller put it here, duplicate and maybe warp it a little bit, right? I will not fast forward this because it won't take so long as the one before. Okay, put it here, flip it vertical and just, just do the same thing like so and duplicate it and put it, oops, there's so many copies and maybe warp it down and transform it a little bit more something like so it's not bad at all all right and now select all four layers and control command e to merge them into one and put it in a screen blending mode this was a little bit faster but you know the procedure you saw it in the previous steps all right let's delete some things that I don't need here and let's unzoom it. It's not bad. For the time's sake, I will not tweak this anymore. You can always go and for your project tweak this. This is just for showing you how you can achieve this kind of effect. All right, let's now tweak a background a little bit. Go to the background, duplicate it just in case. And now I will go to the filter blur. And if you don't have uh, the Photoshop CC, you don't have this blue, uh, blur gallery. I will use that, but you can use a motion blur to create a motion blur. I will use blur gallery and pad blur because I like this. And then I will choose the pad blur to go like this. If you don't see those uh, red, arrow, red arrows, you can put um, 
you can check it here, edit blur shapes, and you will see the red arrows, arrows, uh, arrows, sorry. And now let's create another one here, like so. And why those red arrows are for. So you will see in a second. Let's, with the speed, we can change the speed of the blur. I don't want more than maybe 35 or so, 38, maybe 35. Then let's go here to the red arrows and end point speed lower to zero because I want this part to be more blurred than this part, maybe not to zero, but maybe to a few pixels like so. Or you can blur this part even more. That's why red arrows are for. So I will maybe blur it just like this, all right? And when I'm satisfied with that, I will press OK and I will have this effect in a moment. That's really nice. And this will simulate this speed of the guy. So now let's go to the model here and let's tweak him a little bit. Let's add a curves for a contrast. Clip it here and add some contrast here, some dark spots. Okay, like so. And then we can maybe make a background darker again with the curves, why not? And contrasty like so, you can always tweak that as you like, right? Not bad at all. Now let's, let's add some sparks here on this legs. Let's use this photo and again, lasso tool and just, just select this, copy it and paste it here where the fire layers are and make it smaller, rotate it. Well, maybe make it a little bit bigger, like so, and put it in a screen blending mode. And we have those sparks here. It's really nice. We can duplicate that and have even more sparks or make them smaller. And it's really, really nice. Nice effect. I actually don't like uh, too much the shape of this, of this here part. And it's, it's, it's this one. Mm. I can tweak it even more, but let me see, maybe it's a little bit better like so. And let's reveal, not, I don't want to reveal the foots here like so, it's not bad. And let's leave it like this for now. So let's go to the model here. And I want to create a new layer below the model like so, and paint with the white color right here, maybe 50% of Bastion, build it a few times to have the effect that this is really, really bright fire. And then I want to go, let's, let's clean this a little bit. Let's select all fire layers and group it and name this fire. Okay, maybe I'm a little bit faster right now, but I hope that you will understand this. Okay, this is mm, white bright spots. Uh, okay, white bright spots, those spots here. All right, and now we need another one in the front of at the top of everything and again I will name it I don't know maybe maybe wait maybe use a curves adjustment layer why not and dodge it dodge everything like so this is one thing that I want to do let's let's dodge here some parts because I like this effect like so not too much just to have some parts brighter here this fire I like something like so why not right just make a few bright spots here okay and this is kind of image that you can tweak it really really a lot to add a lot of details but this tutorial it's too long anyway, and I will not do that. I will make the outer edge of 
the model brighter. How to do that? Go to the model here, right? Select uh, the selection law, the selection of the model by clicking, holding control and click on the model here and then go to the select, modify and contract. And maybe we can contract, let's use 10 pixels. Let's see, 10 it's okay. Then I like to feather this. Again, go select, modify and feather. And yeah, feather by 10 pixels too. And now we can load here, again, curves adjustment layer with that mask. And of course we need to invert the mask and then just make sorry clip it here to the model only and make this brighter as you can see the edge of the model are really really bright all right that's one thing the other thing is to add a new layer clip it use the same mask here copy the same mask here and use white brush and maybe with 20 percent of best to just paint with white here because I want this or even 50% opacity. I want this to be even brighter. Okay. All right, guys, let's do the same thing for the edge fire. Let's make it a little bit brighter. So to do that, I will just duplicate this fire group once, twice, maybe like so. And let me see if I merge everything together and put in a screen blending mode. That's nice. And I will I will create a mask here, invert to have a black mask and just paint with a white brush, 100% opacity. I will paint all around him. Guys, I am, it's really, really hot here. I'm melting actually, not because of the fire, but because outside it's 40 degrees of Celsius and here all these lights, it's, it's really hot and I cannot turn on the air condition because will hear all those noises right let's create one more effect let's add some brightness some white lines on the body of course you can build this scene as much as you like but i think we will stop around here let's do one more thing right let's create a new layer all at the top here and let's use a white color maybe 30 percent opacity brush and just add some right spots here something like like so right here to emphasize some effects maybe like so and here change the size of the brush and just add maybe this will not work I don't know but you need to try to see something like so maybe 20 percent opacity and just add some bright spots here like so really really small brush right and maybe a little bit bigger brush here and not bad let me see not bad at all and of course you can now create these things as many lines as you want let me see a body fire let's bring the body fire a little bit more like so and go here to i will name these white lines white lines and let's emphasize some body fire here like so and what we can do now, go below the white lines and make some dark spots here. Okay, again, the same soft brush, white color and make some dark spots here. So just dodge it a little bit, maybe the arm here. Okay, this part of the face maybe. I want some, maybe 30% opacity. Like so. Let me see. Let's zoom it. It's not bad at all. Let's go to the white spots and make 
some adjustments here. Right, it's your own preference. You don't need actually to do this, but I like this kind of effect here. And now I will lower the opacity a little bit like so. And let me see. Let me see before that you can leave it like so. And after that, before and after, I really like this kind of touch here. Let's lower the best even more. And that's basically, basically it. We will stop here. We can add even more things to this image, but I already said this is already too long tutorial. So we will do the final color correction and that's it. Let's merge all layers into one with Shift Control Alt E or Shift Command Option E on a Mac. And I will go use a few things. I will use the collection. It's a free uh, plugin for Photoshop from Google. All right, and I have some of my favorites here, but you will have something like so. And I will like to use a pro contrast, a little bit of dynamic contrast and regular contrast like so, and add another filter. It's a tonal contrast here. Now it's too much. We need to zero everything out. Those were default values. I don't know why default is not zero everything, but that's how it is. I want to emphasize the highlights a little bit like so, maybe it's too much and the uh, shadows. Yeah, but just a touch. Let me now compare before and after, before and after really nice. Press OK and wait for a few seconds for Photoshop to apply this effect. All right, and now we can add a mask here and erase the effect from those parts here. All right, something like this. That's okay. Now let's merge again everything together and I will use a filter and filter, uh, sorry, not filter gallery, but filter and uh, where it is, camera roll filter. I am always using the shortcut, keyboard shortcuts. For this, it's Shift Control A or Shift Command A on a Mac. And now I will add a little bit more contrast, just a touch of clarity, like so. Five, it's okay. Maybe we can use this the haze slider to the haze it a little bit and to add some amount of uh, vignetting, something like so. And I like to add some yellow colors to the highlights. Oof, I forgot one thing, guys. I forgot one thing I will show you later just to finish this. And maybe a little bit bluish. We can add bluish or yellowish, something like movie uh, feel on this image, something like so. And press OK for now. What I forgot is to add some glow behind the guy. So for that, I need to undo all color corrections and go all the way down behind the model, below the model actually, here, put a new blank layer and use some color, maybe, maybe this one, orange. And then I will use gradient tool here and I will choose the color to blank to empty this one. And I will use radial one and just create something like so. And then, transform it to have something like this maybe you can transform it even more if you want and put it into the right let's see linear light or pin light let's use the linear light it's nice I will show you the pin light too it's not bad but it's too red right I will use linear light and now I can use a hue saturation adjustment layer and put it here just to maybe go a little bit towards the red and lower the, the saturation a little bit and lower the opacity of this layer. Okay, just to have this nice effect of him glowing when he's flying, right? And now we can do all the steps again, right? Merge everything together, go to the Nick Color FX Pro, it will be faster now, I will fast forward this. And that's it, guys. I did all the color, color correction again. I can delete those layers and we have the final image. Of course, you can lower the opacity and maybe blend with the original before the color correction or you can leave it like so or you can change the color correction like you want it. I don't know, but 
that's it for today. And we are finally done and I'm almost melted here in the studio, it's really really hot. I hope that you like this tutorial and that you learn something new out of it. This is really fun effect to create and of course it takes some time to create it and some practice. So practice, experiment, have fun and if you have any questions regarding to this episode, please leave them in the comments below, I will be glad to answer it. See you next week in the next fun episode. Bye bye.